I'm Maria, this is Friar Roderick for amaria.com, and we're in Washington, D.C. at the American Life League Conference, the Personhood Conference. We have here Sean Kenny. How are you doing, Sean? Doing well. How are you? Good. Good. And you're the, um, the, the uh, executive, executive director of American Life League. That's, That's pretty correct. big. Uh, yes, it's very big and it's a great responsibility, but I'll tell you what, it's been a, an absolutely great event so far, so I'm glad to be a part of things. How many people have come? Well, for, for this event, we've, I mean, people are keeping coming and going, so it's somewhere, you know, we're, we're in the hundreds at this point, but for the march itself, we're expecting literally hundreds of thousands, so, and that's despite some of the difficult weather we're going through, so, right. uh, you know, very encouraging, very encouraging. Very encouraging. So how many speakers have you had this, um, this year? Um, well, I, I mean, as, as you see from the schedule, you've got dozens at this point, so, <laughs> um, so it's pretty action-packed. I think I had a good 15 minutes at the beginning, and then they scooted me out for the next one. But uh, really what's encouraging for us at the Personhood Conference this year is just, just the number of speakers we've actually had lined up and the number of folks that are literally coming in you know, and sitting down and listening to some of the message and, and just learning more about what personhood is, what it can do for the pro-life movement, and how much success it's had over the last two years. Okay, so in the last two years, you focused on the personhood, and how many years have you been doing this on uh, this annual event here as, uh, with conferences? Well, for the Training and Activism Week, and this will be our 10th year, um, in terms of advocating for personhood, obviously this is something that's rooted in the magisterium, so it's something that, that our founder, J.D. Brown, has, has passionately advocated for over the last, uh, you know, now you're going well into 37 years since Roe v. Wade, so, you know, so this is something that American Life League has just genuinely had at its heart uh, for, for years and years and years, and it's only been recently where we've really been able to articulate it in such a way that's actually turned into this movement of folks that are really willing to, to take some of the, the youth and the enthusiasm that you find here today and, and take that back into the communities, take it back into their parishes, and really uh, you know, find ways to become more involved and, and to, to, to approach what, of course, has to be the single greatest tragedy of my generation, if not the, Amer of not, not the history of the United States, and to find a way to go ahead and, and end this, not just when it comes to, to, to abortion, but to a whole host of life issues. Yeah, it seems to be uh, you, you nailed the head as far as bringing out the humanity, you know, and I should say that, um, that, that it's a personal approach, right? Personhood, right? That's right. So it's, That's right. And it's 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 the culture that we live in is, is such a dehumanizing effect from time to time, and we, it's it's very easy to lose the the, the image of God uh, in 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 the other person, and that's I mean that's just the culture that we're in. What this does, and what it's done in such a unique way, is it's actually inspired many to, to sort of to, to reacclimate themselves to that, to say, you know, just be, you know, if, who, no matter who that person is, whether it's uh, a child in the womb or whether it's somebody on, their, on, the, on a respirator, um, you know, that, 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 that the image of God is still there, and that that's something that as a society, we can either choose to respect and, and, and cultivate, or we can do something else, and, and that's really sort of the beauty of the personhood message, is that, you know, everyone, no matter who you are, no matter what stage of life that you're in, deserves the full protection of our laws as a society. So it puts a very um, beautiful face on everything. Thing, if you will. Absolutely, absolutely it does. Great, Sean. Now, the uh, American Life League is actually a, a very big organization, right? It's the largest in America? Yeah. It's, it's the largest Catholic pro-life organization in the country. So National Right to Life beats us by just a hair uh, in terms of the largest organization. But, uh, you know, American Life League is, again, it's, had a, it's a 30-year pedigree right now. Um, it's it's uh, uh, just a, a very large organization. There are so many different projects that we do. Personhood, of course, is one facet of it. But, you know, when it comes to taking on Planned Parenthood or speaking about, the, you know, sort of the, the concerns or, or, or the evils of, of, of chemical contraception and things like that and what that does to people and um you and are Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> Would you guess? <laughs> yes, but uh, but you know we, when you start getting to this whole stream of issues, um, you know the American Life League has 26 different projects that it embarks upon it during the course of the year, and it's it's really for an organization of our size, it's a lot of work to do. But you know, given the culture that we're facing, given the folks that believe in the mission, what we're trying to accomplish here, um, you know, it's one of those it's one of those organizations where not only do you get the most bang for your buck in terms of you know what we accomplish, but for the folks that are involved in the work, what we do, uh, it's very easy to wake up in the morning, it's very easy to, to, to go home at night knowing that you've accomplished something. Oh, great. So what you're trying to say is if, you're, uh, if, if any of our audience is um, interested in donating uh, to the pro-life cause, it should be to the American Life League, right? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. We certainly wouldn't turn that away. But there, there, there are obviously a variety of different organizations anybody could give to, but for, for the American Life League, you know, I mean, it's, you know, the stewardship's there, and certainly the history of success is there as well, and the history of fidelity to the cause. So. Well, I know that so you're um, working well with uh, HLI, and you're working well, of course, 
Justice with uh, Nellie Gray and the whole uh, March for Life. So I see a lot of uh, interplay with all the other groups that are working for the same cause. Yeah, and that's a, that's a good thing. I mean, the more more unity that we can have in the movement, I think the better. But so long as that unity is focused on, of course, accomplishing the right things. Um, you know, American Life League, right? You're, exactly. you're leagued together. Exactly, exactly. So so long as we're, as long as we're focused on the right things, and that of course means you know taking on the culture of death in all its forms. And you know, so long as we're we're, we're focused on this, I think we're we're making progress. And yes, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Okay. But at, at the end of the day, um, you know, we're, we're getting it done. And personhood is just simply one of those one of those strategies, one of those tools that I think for the first time in a long time, and I've been involved in the movement since I was a teenager, um, that's really started to really inspire some of the activists in a way that I personally have not seen in my long involvement in the movement. So uh, it's great to see. So what's the um, overall prognosis of the whole um, effort to end uh, abortion in America? Well, at the moment, uh, you know, obviously the, the current climate here in Washington is, is bleak. Um, you know, last year, of course, we, 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 you know, folks came to the march. You know, hundreds of thousands arrived. The Washington Post said it was hundreds. Um, the largest one ever, you think? I, absolutely. It had to be. It had to be. I mean, it's, it's, there's, I mean if you were to sit, get on top of one of the roofs and just watch down Constitution Avenue, it was packed. I thought so, too. I've been here a lot of years, and it was big. Yeah, and, and there was a lot of concern at that point in time, and I think that the mood at that march was one of, of just grave concern, because we had the Freedom of Choice Act, we had a new administration, um, you know, we were just very concerned about the future of the movement, and I think that the mood today has sort of swung to a little bit of enthusiasm and encouragement, not that the climate here has changed necessarily, but that I think that folks are more motivated to do something about, uh, you know, the current climate and sort of the, the, you know, the, the culture of death, really, that, that, that sort of ensnared our government. Um, you know, we're we understand what's in, what's in front of us now. Uh, we understand that it, that it's not invincible. We understand that with our voices and with our hard work, we're going to be able to, to, to stand this. And for the youth, I mean, some of the, you know, we start getting into the polling numbers and things of this nature, and obviously right. principal doesn't pay attention to those things. But um, when you start looking at, uh, you know, the youth and you find out that this, this is really the most pro-life generation that, that America's ever had, and at least in the history of modern polling, um, you realize that, you know, the generation that's been most affected, you go to 18 to 40 year olds. I mean, the one in three of my generation is is dead. Um, that impacts us in a tremendous way. It's one in three of my classmates I will never see. One in three of my colleagues I will never work with. Um, but the good news in all of this is that you know I firmly believe that they are praying for us, right. and they're watching us. And so not only do we have a, a consciousness really uh, coming together and a sort of an awakening amongst this generation, but we have another generation, our, our friends that we never got a chance to meet, that are earnestly praying for us to to do what's right. So you're uh, not only a, a league of all Americans, but a league of uh, all Americans who are in heaven, too, as well. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Americans and anyone else who's willing to pray for the end of abortion. So. <laughs> Been some, some big news recently with the uh, the new um, senator who was elected in in Boston. Does that have an effect on the whole cause? Um, to some degree, I, I think that, that that some people think that you know because health care is no longer an issue or may no longer be an issue that that maybe you know we we've won something. It's time to go ahead and retire, and nothing could be further from the truth. Right. Um, you know that that all we've done is preserve the status quo, and the status quo, of course, is just simply not good enough. What we need to do, and what we need to be focused on, is making sure that that we don't just stop there. I mean. You know, yeah, I mean, I mean, Senator Brown, uh, Senator Elect Brown, at this point, um, you know, is not exactly the Catholic position on life. Um, you know, there, there, there are a number of other things that need to come into place. And so, just because we've won something, or at least we've cr created a stalemate on something, doesn't mean that the, that the battle's over. I mean, still, 4,000 children die a day in abortion. Um, there's, there's still a hostile climate in Washington to the pro-life message. Uh, there's still, you know, the folks that we go to church with, and and and, and others, um, you know, that still need to hear this message. And so so, you know, this should be encouragement to do more, not to do less. Right. Do you think it's a, a bellwether indication of what's going to happen in uh, November, you think? I think what it shows people is that, that change can occur swiftly and that it's never as bleak as it seems. Right. <laughs> I mean, it was, I guess... Against all odds. Against all odds. I mean, oh, I mean, you look at, you know, the previous election, you know, Obama won with 31 points and Coakley lost it by three. So, uh, you know, that, I mean, the, the, this gate swing and, you know, pendulum swing and for as bleak as it seemed in 2009, um, we should take courage and know that great things can happen, not just in 2010, but in the future, if we're ever possibly going to end abortion within our lifetime. Well, very good, Sean, for coming to, um, uh, to do our interview here with us, and we uh, hope that everything goes well with you in the, in the American Life League and the whole pro-life movement. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. God bless you, Sean. God bless you as well. Thank you. God bless you for uh, all watching airmaria.com.